YouTube and welcome to the next episode of the Godzilla Vlogs where we talk about anything and everything Godzilla. And today we're going to be talking about something that I've wanted to talk about for a very, 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 very long time. And that is the character, or what's really, what's really the best scene in, in my opinion, one of the greatest, <laughs> quite frankly one of the greatest films of all time. The greatest scene from Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. There is a lot of things, it's, it's kind of become popular on the internet now to hate on this movie. And I don't know why. It's like something becomes so popular. It's like, you know what, I'm just gonna bash on it because, you know, that's the cool thing to do. That annoys me. It's become popular to hate on Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, but love Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah is one of the best films in the Godzilla franchise. Period. Not only that, but it was also hailed here in the U.S. when it was released for a little bit. Well, it wasn't really released, but when people started watching it, it was also hailed by fans, by critics. It, this this film was very, very popular, which is in very big contrast to what Godzilla vs. Biollante was. Godzilla vs. Biollante was just panned both in Japan and here in the United States, which is funny considering how Japan has since evolved from them to consider Godzilla vs. Biollante to be the greatest Godzilla movie ever made, topping the original Ishiro Honda masterpiece. But anyways, despite this movie having some flaws, you know, messing up some continuity ideas and messing up some some ideas of time warp, even with my theory about, you know, which Godzilla did this universe take, which uh, in terms of, of course, speaking of those people that came from the future, did they take the one from 54, did they take the one from 84, was 84 and 54 the same Godzilla, which I don't think they were. Even with my theory, which talks about that they took the Godzilla, that, that talks about that there's two Godzillas, one from 54 and 84, and that they took the Godzilla from 1984, even then, there are still some holes in my theory, and that's fine. However, I'm going to stick with my theory, and because it explains the best. I've explained in great detail on a few episodes of The Sons of Sarazawa when I was part of that podcast, explaining my theory on it, and people seem to genuinely like it, and some people I know have actually subscribed to that theory, which makes me pretty happy. Even with my theory in mind, there are still major holes. Granted, I don't think Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah fucked up continuity anywhere near as much as Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, where it completely ignores Heisei continuity in general. I believe this movie is far superior. It kind of reminds me of Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Yes, I just compared Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah to Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Uh, Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan has a couple of logic leaps in the film that left me kind of going, huh? But the rest of the movie was so good that it kind of just made me brush over those issues and still really enjoy the movie. This is the same case here. What is done wrong in this movie is done wrong. However, what was done good in Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah far outweighs and outshines those wrongs that leaves me leaving the film with a much more positive reaction than a negative reaction. That's how I look at movies in general. And Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah is one of the greatest examples of this. There was still stuff that was wrong in it, but I, I still genuinely, really, really, really liked it. Because I genuinely thought what this film had, above several other Godzilla films and everything, is that this film not only had the soul of Godzilla right, but this film had a very interesting plot, though a little convoluted. Very interesting plot, but above that had very good characters, specifically with Daisuke Shindo. Now with some behind the scenes of this movie, this film was directed by Kajuo Omori. And Omori was not a Godzilla fan. Uh, he was kind of thrown to the director chair because Toho was like, you've directed a couple of things, here you go. It, it was actually very similar to Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Omori was just starting off, and Toho was like, I see potential in you, and they gave him the directing chair for Godzilla vs. Violante. He wasn't a fan of Godzilla. He loved the original. He genuinely liked the original, but none of the other Showa films, for better or for worse, ever really captured him. So what he did was he went back and he watched all of those Godzilla movies and everything from beginning to end in the Showa series, and he said, all right, I think I get it. And he tried something with Godzilla vs. Violante. Godzilla vs. Violante was a success... But it wasn't as big as a, of a success as Toho wanted. And so almost immediately, just a couple years later, immediately they said, we want to bring back the normal kind of Godzilla trope, which is bring back a... a, a, not a no, don't create a new monster. Bring back an original monster, which this one was King Ghidorah, and everything like that. And Omori was hired to direct it again. And Omori took 
what was good about specifically a lot of the early 60s Godzillas and put it into a Heisei modern era kind of look. And it worked. It clicked, and I think it's really, really good. This film, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, is really, truly what established the Heisei series from here on out. This, this was the film that started it all. Shindo, which is my favorite character, is what we're talking about here, is played by Yoshio Tsuchiya, which, if you're a Godzilla fan, you already know who he is. But in case you don't know who he is, he is like the veteran Godzilla actor next to Kenji Zahara. Kenji Zahara and Yoshio Tsuchiya are like the two guys in terms of kaiju and tokusatsu films. Tsuchiya loved these, these Godzilla films. He was a humongous fan. Even when the original first came out, he always wanted to play in tokusatsu movies. He's actually most known for, really here in the West, for playing one of the lead characters in Seven Samurai, directed by Akira Kurosawa. Tsuchiya actually did not like his performance in that movie. He thought he gave a good performance, never mind. He thought he gave a good performance, but he didn't like being in those kind of movies. So he'd rather work with the Shiro Honda on a lot of his movies, and Jun Fukuda on a lot of his tokusatsu films, and countless others. Countless others. So he knew the genre very well. And he's also a phenomenal actor at playing someone who's tormented. Somebody who is juggling back and forth what's moral and what's not. That is Shindo's character in a nutshell. Throughout beginning to end of Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, Shindo is doing nothing but, but really juggling back and forth, is this the right thing to do? Swallowing up his pride and doing something that he knows is wrong, but he knows it's right in terms of the greater good. That's what Shindo's character is in a nutshell. And when I talk about the best scene in Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, it is hands down the scene where Shindo and the new resurrected Godzilla lock eyes for one last time, and then Godzilla ultimately kills Shindo. This scene has been scrutinized and has been wrongly analyzed so many times on YouTube. And the biggest example of this is James Rolfe's review of Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Where he's like, oh yeah, he's not... James Rolfe basically had the idea that Shindo's like, no, he's not going to kill me, he loves me. And then all of a sudden Godzilla's like, no, fuck you, and kills, and kills Shindo. And he thinks it's a badass moment, and a bit of a hilarious moment. That's not the truth at all. It's almost like he did not even watch the scene itself, or the movie itself, or the things leading up to the scene. Because Tsuchiya no, isn't like, no, Godzilla's not going to kill me because he knows me. No. Shindo knows that Godzilla will kill him, because that's what Godzilla was born to do, to kill. And he knows that because he wants to die, because Shindo, not once but twice, has caused this creature such horrible damnation. He has damned this monster not once but twice. And that's a horrible thing to think about. Now. Shindo's relationship with Godzilla is really, really interesting because this happened back in 1944 when, you know, the World War II was basically in its highest moment, was in, was in 1944. Shindo is in charge of this garrison on Lagos Island and they are hugely outnumbered and outgunned by the Americans, these Japanese soldiers. And so in one last ditch offensive, which was very common for the Japanese for the Japanese at the time, Shindo orders one last bonsai charge, one last offensive, which he knows full well would lead to the death of the last of the garrison. Now, <laughs> what's interesting about that is when he gives the order of the charge and they actually charge, before the Godzillasaurus arrives, you see Shindo sitting down in his cave, in the cave where he's stationed. And he's got a highly decorated uniform on, and he's got his samurai, his samurai, his samurai sword right next to him. It didn't hit me until this last viewing of the movie that I realized what he was going to do and why he didn't take place in the attack itself. While all of his soldiers are dying, what Shindo is going to do is he's going to commit harakiri. He's going to kill himself. He's going to go through the samurai tradition of ritual suicide. And then all of a sudden he hears those epic footsteps and the Godzilla Saurus walks by him and starts attacking the American soldiers. Godzilla, the Godzilla Saurus did not just save Shindo for his garrison and keeping his garrison alive enough to be moved out of Lagos Island and somewhere else, but he also saved Shindo's life, literally, in that sequence where he was going to kill himself. 
and he does it because the Godzilla source comes in and everything like that. Now that alone is pretty deep. You know, it hurts Shindo because this Godzilla, the Godzilla source gets all sorts of fucked up in that scene, right? He, he's just covered in blood, he's been shot a million times, and he's now lying on the ground just waiting to die. And Shindo is devastated. And you have that another great scene where, where Shindo thanks the Godzilla Saurus for basically saving their lives and how sorry he is. There's even a scene where, where he salutes the, the Godzilla Saurus very honorably and actually sheds a tear because he's so devastated the fact that this dinosaur <laughs> saved them, but he can't save it. And he has no choice but to run away. That Godzilla source became irradiated, and what I think became the Godzilla from 1984 and Godzilla vs. Violante. That Godzilla destroyed the cities. And what's interesting is that Shindo managed to somehow survive World War II, managed to survive, and basically when the Americans stepped foot into uh, set foot into Japan and started the reconstruction of Japan, Shindo was one of those head tycoons in charge of everything. There is a great line when King Ghidorah destroys one of, uh, one of the cities. He's standing there and he goes, I I'll have my revenge. He, he screams and he's like, I won't let him destroy my garden city. I'll have my revenge because he, in many ways, built that city. He, I don't know what exactly he was in charge with, be it the steel the city used or something. He was one of the huge head tycoons of Japan, period. He, was, he had like a, a, like a monopoly over several, several things to the point where he had kind of his own private army where he has this kind of like, he has a built nuclear submarine ready for the JSDF. So not only that, but he's hired by the government to do all this stuff. He's got loads of money and everything like that. He knows about this dinosaur, right? And he vows never to tell anyone about it because everybody would think he's insane. And above that, if he told people about like what saved him, he would be the, one, he would be laughed at, but two, it would be a very dishonorable thing to do because the honorable thing to do in the Japanese army at the time is to die, is to die in battle. And Shindo lived. And it'd be very dishonorable if he said, this thing saved me, something saved me. It doesn't matter if it was a monster or not. It's him, the fact that he has been saved is very, very dishonorable. And, which is so fucking stupid, but thank God the Japanese culture isn't like that anymore. So when the people from the future take that Godzilla Saurus, put it somewhere else, and they make King Ghidorah, when King Ghidorah destroys Tokyo and everything like that, uh, I'm not sure if it was Tokyo or not, it was some city, all of a sudden Shindo looks out the window and he sees the city in flames as King Ghidorah flies away. He says, I will not let you destroy my garden city. I will have my revenge. And so from this point, he's very angry about what has happened. He's been betrayed, essentially, because the people from the future vowed to get rid of Godzilla, which they did. They got rid of the 1984 Godzilla, but instead they made King Ghidorah, which is even worse than Godzilla in some ways. He's pissed about that, and at the same time, People start finding out about the Godzilla Saurus and everything like that, and he's very hush hush about it. But it starts bringing back all the memories of what what he went through and how he couldn't save the dinosaur. And so, in some ways, he looks at these people going back in time and transporting the dinosaur from one place to another. He looks at that as kind of like his saving grace. Shindo kind of looks at this and is like, "Okay, this is this is me redeeming myself for the horror that I did in the past because." I left Godzilla, I left the Godzilla source on the island to die, all right, to at least die in its environment and die peacefully. But it didn't, and it got, new, it got irradiated by whatever the hell bomb was dropped there, and now it's become this horrible mutation that does nothing want, but, that does nothing but want to destroy us because it's this mutation. And Shindo feels guilty about that, so when the future people transport Godzilla to to the middle of the fuck nowhere in the Pacific, Shindo's like, okay, that's one thing, that's probably the biggest thing weighing down his conscious, and just lets it, it's pro probably the biggest thing weighing down his conscious has just been released. Because if you look at it, Shindo doesn't have a wife, he doesn't have any children, he's just so devoted to his business, and part of me think, 
thinks that that is because of the Godzillasaurus, is that he feels so guilty about that that he does nothing but rebuild and rebuild and does nothing but work, 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 and work. And so now that this has happened, and now the Godzilla, the Godzilla is no more, and then Godzillasaurus just died, he's like, oh, thank God. Well, it turns out that a Russian nuclear submarine went missing and revived that said Godzillasaurus. But this time, instead of with nuclear weapons back in the 50s, it was even with more powerful nuclear nuclear reactors from a modern-day nuclear submarine. Well, what happens is that the, 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 the JSDF go to Shindo, and they're like, King Ghidorah is bad, okay? It may be even worse than Godzilla. And Shindo and the JSDF agree that what we need to do is to revive Godzilla to combat King Ghidorah, because nothing we've done to King Ghidorah has stopped him. That's not exactly the greatest idea, but it would work, given the universe that they're in. And so Shindo sends out his nuclear submarine to go out and revive Godzilla and basically nuke him to bring him back to life. But Godzilla's already alive, so then he absorbs that nuclear submarine, right? And then all of a sudden Shindo receives a phone call in the middle of the night. I love this scene, it's so simple. Is all of a sudden you hear the telephone ring and it's echoing. And Shindo picks up the phone and goes, what? It sank? And then there's like a, a slight zoom in on his face. And a look on his face is one like, oh god. Oh god, I've just done it again. I have just done it again. I have not just damned this monster that saved me. I've just not damned this monster once, but twice. And that's Shindo's plight. And that's what I love about that. Shindo's plight is that this monster that saved him, he has not only fucked over once back in... And that's what came back in Attack Night in 1984 and 1989. Now he's come back and he's even more mutated and he's even worse. He's even worse off and angrier <laughs> than the one before. Because at least the one before was still very animalistic. This Godzilla is not. This Godzilla is very angry, which brings up that line when Godzilla defeats King Ghidorah for the first time. <laughs> where he, where one of the characters goes, just look at that thing, there's no way he's going to help us. <laughs> I love that line. That's one reason why I love this movie. And that Godzilla is angry. And so, <laughs> there is also this great line, which ties into what Shindo says with... With, uh... When King Ghidorah destroys his city, he says, I will have my revenge. When Godzilla and King Ghidorah are about to square off, he holds up the photo of this Godzillasaurus that saved him. And what's funny is that Shindo is almost so blind by the fact that this is the monster that saved him, he doesn't look at the reality situations at hand. He says, he's come to protect us once again. Uh, or something like that. He says, our savior will protect us once again. And then, of course, Godzilla defeats King Ghidorah in a rather intense battle, one of the best in the Heisei series. And suddenly, Shindo sees how angry Godzilla is in that he's not going back into the sea. He is going on a rampage of destruction, and Shindo, and another great kind of like boom-in shot, Shindo just stands there and slowly looks down from the screen. And just the, releva the, the revelation on his face is so good. This is just a testament to how wonderful of an actor Tsuchiya is. Also, Akira Fukube's music helps a lot. Only if Fukube could have scored this movie, I think. If somebody else scored this movie, I don't think it would have worked. Akira Fukube is what makes Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah such a masterpiece. Really, it is. Especially with in terms of both Godzilla's theme and Shindo's theme. So, when Godzilla starts destroying the city, right? Godzilla starts destroying this, everything is just weighing down on Shindo's shoulders over and over and over again, like it's just nuts, right? Shindo makes a decision that he should have done back in 1945, which is he's going to kill himself because he has dishonored himself so much by literally destroying what life this dinosaur had. He decides to then kill himself, pay, pay the ultimate sacrifices for his sins. And what's funny is that he, Godzilla recognizes him. He stands in the window, right? And Godzilla looks in the window. And Godzilla recognizes him. And at first Godzilla roars and shows his anger and everything like that. And then when he lowers, I love the snarl on his face as he continues to lock eyes with Shindo. Shindo is barely holding it together. Shindo, Shindo is... His lips are qu his his lower lip is quivering, he's shaking a little bit, and his eyes are just 
like they want to tear up so much, but yeah, he's hiding it all back. He's 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 maintain he's bringing out his soldier self essentially. And of course, it flashes back several times to 1944, and they were giving the same look at each other where they locked eyes then. And then all of a sudden, Godzilla lowers himself, like like calms himself down. And it's like Godzilla is also apologizing that now he has to do to Shindo what Shindo did what Shindo kind of made him to do, which is kill. Godzilla is literally born, was born, and this, this Godzilla was literally born, not by an accident, but on purpose, and it was born to kill. It was a killing machine. And now this Godzilla is very, very angry and alone, which go, ties a line into Godzilla's high state character until Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, when everything starts changing. This Godzilla is alone. And it brings about that poem where, where it says, I was the last of my kind, you made me the first, and I never could have been any lonelier. That was, that's, that's Godzilla's character in a nutshell in, in the Heisei series. Shindo continues to look at and is like, Godzilla doesn't want to kill him because this is the only human to ever, ever show him any kind of sympathy whatsoever. And Godzilla can remember that. And here he is staring at him in the face. And Godzilla's like, no, I can't kill you. But Shindo's like, yes, you need to kill me because I'm the one that, that made you. Though Godzilla probably doesn't really know that. So Shindo's like, I'm the one that made you. Please kill me. And after a while, Godzilla's eyes turn from sorrow. This goes into the awesomeness of the animatronic face. The animatronic face is really good. But all of a sudden, it goes from sorrow to one of, like, just pure anger, right? Of pure anger. And then it cuts back to Shindo. And if you look at Shindo's face... Shindo's face, he takes in a deep breath and exhales, and then shakes his face up and he shakes his head up and down, like saying, yes, he understands, yes, he's going to kill me. And so what does Godzilla do? Godzilla does the one thing he was born to do, which is kill, and he kills Shindo, bringing an end to this absolutely tragic, tragic, tragic character. Now, if nothing else with Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah was good, and they kept Shindo in there, Shindo is... If anything, the only reason why I, I... Shindo's character would hold this movie up for me. I mean that. If you have one great character in a movie that's kind of mediocre, I will still like that movie. First off, this movie is not mediocre whatsoever. This movie is outstanding. But Shindo's character is phenomenal. If you haven't seen this movie yet, well, one, I just spoiled the entire fucking thing for you, but Shindo's character is just one of those things in the movie that is so rare, especially in a, in, a, in a movie of this magnitude. I don't think we we ever get a character quite as deep and as thought-provoking as Shindo in the rest of the Heisei series. And that includes 84 and Biollante. Shindo is by far one of my favorite characters ever from the Godzilla genre, and one of my favorite characters ever. In fact, I named one of the main characters in the Godzilla saga after him, Daisuke Shindo. And it's basically based off him. I even want the, the, him to look kind of like Tsuchiya. He's also my favorite character I've written in the Godzilla. So actually, I think he's my favorite character I've written ever. But Daisuke, uh, Shindo in Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah is by far the greatest character in the movie. And by far one of the greatest characters. I honestly think, in full honesty, he is just below Dr. Sarazawa from the original Godzilla. That is how much I love Shindo. It's a very rare thing to get a character as thought out as this in a Godzilla movie. The writers nailed it, and so did Omori, and the editing nailed it, and especially in that one scene, the final scene, his Shindo's death scene, just nailed his character. Just nailed it. It's like, if that scene had, was done any differently, it, it probably would have ruined Shindo. It probably would have ruined his character. It was just done perfectly. I can't emphasize enough how wonderful the music is and how the music helped so much during that sequence. Akira Fukube nailed it. I mean, this is Akira Fukube coming out of retirement. He fucking nailed it and he came back with a bang and his music score just really helped in this sequence because he got it. Akira Fukube understands Godzilla because he scored enough of his freaking movies. He should know and he scored the original movie and he thinks, Akira Fukube thinks that the original Godzilla was his best score ever. So, he knows his character. Everyone in this movie knew what they were doing. Tsuchiya, Omori, the cinematography guy, the special effect, uh, Koichi Kawakita, who did the special effects on Kira Fukube, they all knew what they were doing, and it paid off in that one scene. It really, really, it was building up and building up and building up, and all that build up was great, and then all of a sudden, it just nailed it. I would have changed nothing with that scene.
That scene is just fucking gorgeous. And I... I can't gush about it enough. Fucking watch this movie again. <laughs> I freaking love Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. One of the best in the Godzilla series, period. So go on Facebook, like which, my new movie, Which Way They Walk, which by the time you're seeing this, we would have wrapped filming and that post-production has fully begun. Like AM Productions for all up-to-date information about what I am doing. Uh, and like the Godzilla Saga for all up-to-date information about how those four books are coming along. So hit the like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment saying how much of a retard I am or how much you agree with me. And this is Adam Noyce of AM Productions saying, sayonara.